did God judge the sin of Achan so severely? The account of Achan's transgression and God's retribution can be found in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua was one of the Israelites who fought alongside Achan during the Battle of Jericho. Because of the terrible sin that Jericho had committed, God had given the Israelites the command to wipe out the entire city. The Israelites were making their final preparations to take possession of the land of Canaan, which had been promised to them by the Lord. Nevertheless, the primary threat that they faced was not an adversary from the outside, but rather corruption from within their own ranks. Sin's effects, like those of a tumor, may at first be difficult to identify. Yet if they are allowed to progress unchecked, it is capable of taking countless lives. As Joshua and the people of Israel approached the country that had been promised to them, the Lord impressed upon them the importance of this lesson. The Lord solemnly and publicly invested Joshua with authority to lead the Israelites while they were camped on the eastern bank of the Jordan River. Joshua then bound his people by covenant to obey all of the Lord's commands. Joshua chapter 1 verses 16 to 18 Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Once across the Jordan River, the Israelites faced a difficult obstacle, Jericho. If they could conquer this heavily fortified city, passage into the interior of the land would be easily achieved. To prepare the people for battle, Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves for his purpose. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders, miracles among you. Joshua said, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord gave them the battle plan. Israelite soldiers were to march around Jericho once a day for six days, accompanied by seven priests carrying trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant. Before going up to Jericho to march on the seventh day, Joshua specifically forbade the people from taking anything from the city for personal gain. Joshua chapter 6 verse 18 but as for you, keep yourselves away from the things under the ban which are to be destroyed, so that you do not covet them and take some of the things under the ban for personal gain, and put the camp of Israel under the ban doomed to destruction, and bring disaster upon it. As they concluded their march this day, according to the Lord's instructions, the people shouted, the trumpets blew, and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city. However, during the occupation of Jericho, an Israelite named Achan disobeyed and took the spoils for himself, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 7 verse 1 But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully and violated their obligation in regard to the things off-limits under the ban those things belonging to the Lord. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban for personal gain. Therefore the anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. Joshua was unaware of Achan's actions or that his presence in the camp had caused the Lord to withdraw his support for the people. Joshua instructed the people not to take any of the accursed things, which were associated with the Canaanites' demonic and debasing worship and practices. Joshua chapter 6 verse 18 But as for you, keep yourselves away from the things under the man which are to be destroyed, 
so that you do not covet them, and take some of the things under the ban for personal gain, and put the camp of Israel under the ban doomed to destruction, and bring disaster upon it. The wars fought by Israel and Canaan were not to be plundering wars of personal gain. They were an unusual, sacred instrument in God's hand, used for judgment against a society ripe for judgment. The Canaanites could not defeat Israel, but they could defeat themselves by alienating themselves from God's plan and power. Joshua chapter 7 verses 2 and 3 now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near beth east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not make all the people go up to fight. Have only about two thousand or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the entire army go up there for they of Ai are few. The recommendation to send only two or three thousand men reflected either faith or self-assurance. In the end, it didn't matter. They could have sent one hundred thousand troops in their disobedience, and it would have made no difference. Joshua chapter 7 verses 4 and 5 So about three thousand men from the sons of Israel went up there, but they fled in retreat from the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about 36 of Israel's men and chased them from the gate as far as the bluffs of Shebarim and struck them down as they descended the steep pass. So the hearts of the people melted in despair and began to doubt God's promise and became like water, disheartened. Joshua, a wise military commander, directed that the larger number recommended by his military intelligence be sent, but it made no difference. They fled in front of the men of Ai. The 36 men slain were 36 more than were slain at Jericho, which was thought to be a much more difficult city to conquer. Though this number was small from a military perspective, what it meant was staggering to Israel and meant that Israel could be defeated in the Promised Land. The loss at Ai demonstrated that it was not the might of the opponent that was important. Rather, it was the aid that God provided. Without the assistance of God, there is no hope. The individuals of Israel had adequate reason to be afraid. Their alarm was entirely logical, because if God did not fight for them, they had nothing to expect but defeat. Joshua chapter 7 verses 6 to 9 Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel. And with great sorrow they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all? only to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. If only we had been willing to live beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that the army of Israel has turned back in retreat and fled before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear about it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? to keep it from dishonor. Tearing your garments and putting dust on your head are two ways to show that you are mourning. Joshua is not only lamenting the loss of 36 men, but he and the elders of Israel are also mourning the loss of the blessing and guidance of God. Joshua's grief is shared by all of them. This defeat was regarded as a national catastrophe by Joshua and the other elders of Israel. They did not adopt a win-if-you-lose-if-you mindset. Instead, they took this loss seriously and did not shrug it off. They were aware that every conflict was important and that there was always a justification for a loss. A defeat of this magnitude does not simply happen. 
Joshua was well aware that it would have been in everyone's best interest if they had never set foot in the promised land at all, in the event that the hand of blessing and direction from God was not upon them. If God did not deliver them, all would be lost. Joshua chapter 7 verses 10 and 11. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why is it that you have fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them to keep. They have even taken some of the things under the ban, and they have both stolen and denied the theft. Moreover, they have also put the stolen objects among their own things. The good news was that God had not abandoned the nation. The bad news was that this defeat was the result of Israel's sin. Joshua does not need to be concerned that the problem is with God. It is almost comforting to find that the problem is with us. As a result, God told Joshua to get up. He didn't have to beg God to change his mind about Israel. Joshua had to change Israel's heart before God. God says that Israel not just one man had sinned. It's mind-boggling to consider that an entire nation was found guilty, all for the sin of one man. When it comes to sin in the church, Paul uses similar language. When it comes to sin in the Corinthian church, he says, Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? A small amount of sin that believers accept and tolerate can infect the entire group. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 Your boasting over the supposed spirituality of your church is not good. Indeed, it is vulgar and inappropriate. Do you not know that just a little leaven ferments the whole batch of dough, just as a little sin corrupts a person or an entire church? One man defrauded God. Similarly, we steal from God when we do not give Him what He commands us to give. The effect of the sin, they now have no power before their enemies. Joshua chapter 7 verses 12 and 13 That is why the soldiers of Israel could not stand and defend themselves before their enemies. They turned their backs and ran before them, because they have become accursed. I will not be with you any more unless you destroy the things under the ban from among you. Rise up, consecrate the people and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, There are things under the ban among you, O Israel. You cannot stand victorious before your enemies until you remove the things under the ban from among you. Israel could not fight in God's power and presence unless they obeyed Him. Israel was bound by a covenant with God that promised blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. Though Joshua did not know the identity of the sinful family, God did. Secret sin on earth is an open scandal in the eyes of God. Once God dealt with a one sinning individual, blessing could come again on the whole nation. Joshua chapter 7 verses 16 to 18 So Joshua got up early in the morning and had Israel come forward by tribes, and the tribe of Judah was chosen by Lot. He had the families of Judah come forward, and the family of the Zerahites was chosen. And he had the family of the Zerahites come forward man by man, and Zabdi was chosen. He brought his household forward man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was chosen. This must have been a painful experience for Achan. How much better to walk in God's will? Sin does have its appeal. Taking those items made Achan feel good. However, the penalty of sin outweighs any fleeting pleasures of sin. Joshua chapter 7 verses 19 to 21 Then Joshua said to Achan, 
My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him in recognition of his righteous judgments. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. So Achan answered Joshua and said, In truth, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils in Jericho a beautiful robe from Shinar, southern Babylon, and two hundred shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing fifty shekels, I wanted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. Even when we sin and try to hide it, we can give the Lord glory by openly and honestly confessing our sin. Hidden sin always has a special power over us. What Achan gained was insignificant in comparison to the lives of 36 men and the welfare of the entire nation. True, the love of money is the root of all evil, and some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, piercing themselves through with many sorrows. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 For the love of money, that is, the greedy desire for it, and the willingness to gain it unethically, is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Consider how Achan could have justified his sin. No one will find out. These things won't be missed. When we are at the terrible place Achan is, we all feel terrible about our sin, wishing we had never done it. May God help us to see the truth about our sin before we do it.